G'day, welcome to another video. This one is called Discovering Space. I only just got this last night. So yeah, <clears throat> I don't really know anything about it apart from that it's more just sit back and watch. Um, it's had pretty good reviews. That's the main reason why I bought it. So let's um, definitely turn that on. And um, yeah, so let's see what it's like, so first time for me. <laughs> cool. I was gonna say, I thought I might have to speed this up. Welcome. We are about to embark on a fascinating journey around the planet that we call home, Earth, and its moon, a natural satellite that has enthralled and captivated mankind since the beginning of time. I've got to admit, this is Directly pretty cool. Is the small crescent of the moon. To the left you can see the Earth, and to the right you can see the bright sun. Let's dim the cockpit lights a little to get a clearer view. Remember that you have a full 360 degree view around the entire ship, and I invite you to look around to take as much in as possible. Presently, we are 180,000 kilometers from Earth. We will make a short powered orbit of the Earth before visiting the far side of the Moon. The Earth is seen as a thin crescent. The dark side is completely covered by the Pacific Ocean. As the crescent becomes more slender, the predominant feature is the backlit layer of atmosphere. As well as providing the air that we breathe, this atmosphere protects us from the cold and harshness of space. Huh. Without this atmosphere, the Earth would be a frozen and lifeless world. As the sunlight is filtered through the atmospheric rim, the crescent turns the color of sunset. As we fall behind the night side of the Earth, we will see the sun slowly fade. If you are quick, you will catch a rare glimpse of the unlit moon, just visible within the glare of the sun. In the shadow of the Earth, without the warmth from the sun, the temperature drops, and we start to feel the chill. As the Earth goes completely dark, <laughs> it's really it's slow. The <laughs> of the Pacific Ocean, with the lights of the continents faintly illuminating the fringes. Without the intensity of the sun, this is a perfect time to pause, look around and contemplate just how many billions of stars are all around us. Every point of light is a star much like our own sun. Many of these stars are host to a solar system similar to our own, and some may contain Earth-like planets. Some may contain life. spot the faint light of Hawaii, in the center of the ocean. In a few moments we will emerge out of the cold Earth's shadow. We will notice the ice on the canopy. This is formed while we have been out of the sunlight, and now becomes illuminated as we emerge into light. <sighs> oh, this is awesome, we feel God. The of the sun again. This will burn off the ice on our canopy in no time. 
you guys have got to see this. I might even do this in 3D, this one as well. This is just awesome. start to make out the blue of the sea, the clouds and some green land mass. Oh, that is just insane. That, this is cool. This is cool. Heading north over the Indian Ocean, we pass over Sri Lanka and India, Pakistan, Afghanistan and Iran, the Persian Gulf and Saudi Arabia. over Spain, France, Germany, United Kingdom and Scandinavia to the north. Let's climb altitude and continue west over the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> this is cool. This is the Caribbean and northern extent of South America. This is just insane. United States is still in darkness, with the East Coast just waking up. <laughs> Note the relatively low population density of Canada to the north. see the polar ice cap. This is formed from frozen sea ice and grows and retreats through the seasons. Let's leave Earth behind for a while and turn our attention to our moon, currently hidden in the glare of the sun. As the moon passes directly between us and the sun, the intense brightness will be dulled for a moment, allowing us to see the unlit disk of the moon again. As we swing toward the moon, it should become visible as a thin crescent over on the left. Oh, what? There it is, just visible again and we can see it moving slowly against the backdrop of stars. The moon is locked to the Earth, such that as it orbits, it always keeps the same familiar face towards us. However, at different points through its orbit, it will have more or less of this side lit, and this is what causes the moon to go from a thin crescent to a full moon in the night sky. Note that at this point in the moon's orbit, the side facing the Earth is barely illuminated, and would appear only as a very thin crescent in the early morning or evening sky. This journey will take us over the side of the moon that is never seen from Earth. We are now over the far side of the moon, and it is a very unfamiliar face, with little of the dark markings, that are so familiar to us. Most of this face is littered with craters, formed from violent impacts with asteroids, during the time of the Great Bombardment, when the formation of the solar system took place. The dark 
circular region to the lower right is called Mayor Oriental. We will fly in to get a closer look. Its outer ring is about 900 kilometers in diameter. It was originally formed from a very large impact crater, which was later flooded with volcanic lava during the formation of the moon. This is how all the lunar maria have been formed. Their distinctive dark color is due to the basalt, or cooled lava, being much less reflective than the surrounding terrain. We are now 200 kilometers above the moon's surface, and we can play back a recording of the Apollo astronauts as they first orbited the moon. As we get closer, we can make out more clearly the mountainous terrain, and the many impact craters. Just imagine what the Apollo astronauts when they became the first humans to ever set eyes upon this view. We will now transition down to 10 kilometers to get a much closer look. Hold on. At this height, you can see the mountains break up the circular profile of the moon. Through a telescope from Earth, this mountainous profile can just be seen. What's that? What was the time we got on it? Third time? These mountains can be up to four kilometers high. We want the uh, big camera. Big lens or small? At 20,000 kilometers per hour, even at this altitude, the moon seems small. Even with the sun in the sky, because the moon has no atmosphere, the bright band of the Milky Way can be seen stretching out across the horizon. Let's head back up to a higher altitude to see more. Until the very late 50s, man's view of the moon was limited to just the side facing the Earth. The far side of the moon was first photographed by the Soviet probe Luna 3 in 1959, and at this point the Soviet Union was ahead in the space race. It has since been visited by many craft throughout the 60s, culminating in the Apollo program, which saw man land on the moon in 1969. But, amongst rising costs and diminishing public and political interest, the Apollo program ended in 1972. Man has not returned. As the sun rises higher overhead, the terrain becomes much less dramatic. This isn't because the mountains and craters are smaller but simply because the lighting does not emphasize the slopes as much. This is the same when viewing the moon from Earth through a telescope. The best time to see the mountains and craters is when the moon is half lit. At full moon, very few detailed features are visible. However, even with the most powerful telescopes, the moon cannot be seen in its true detail due to the distortion of the Earth's atmosphere. <clears throat> it is only with the advent of lunar orbiters in the last decades that the moon's surface has been fully mapped. I did not know that. The terrain is much more visible now. From here, you get a real sense of the violent battering the moon has suffered. As we dip towards the night side of the moon, we will line ourselves up to see the Earth again. It will appear directly ahead in about 30 seconds. Let's dim the lights and roll into a suitable position to take in the view. 
hard drive in the room? No, it's be a hard drive. We gotta be quick. What was the time we got out there? Yeah, we just. This is just insane. If you guys have got a gear or an Oculus Go, you guys have got to try this. May not look much on a video. All known life lives on this tiny blue ball. But it's pretty awesome in VR. Man's first time seeing this view was from Apollo 8 on Christmas Eve 1968. So now let's head back home. We can visit the moon in more detail another time. With the sun directly behind us, the Earth is fully illuminated. The thin blue rim of atmosphere that surrounds our planet protects all life from the cold and harshness of space. The white clouds over the land and sea are part of the weather cycle that brings the rain, essential for the sustenance of life. Directly facing us, we can see the continent of Africa. From this viewpoint, we can clearly see the contrast between the different eco-regions. The hot sandy deserts of the Sahara, close to the equator, against the lush green regions of Europe to the north, and the tropics of mid and southern Africa. The bright blue lake is Lake Victoria, the second largest freshwater lake in the world after Lake Superior. Cool. Between the two desert regions of Africa and Asia is the Red Sea. Heading into the night, we see the light fade, the land and cloud darken and the horizon glowing orange. I have been taking note of the speed we've been doing throughout the trip. Although it is dark below, up here we are still brightly illuminated by the sun. Therefore, although our ship is small, we may be able to be seen from the ground, as a small speck of light moving against the dark sky. If you turn right round to the left, you will be able to see the sun setting over the earth one last time. With the warmth of the sun leaving us, we come to the end of this tour. I do hope you enjoyed your journey, and will come back to see some more, another time. I definitely will. Oh, it ends up, that ends pretty abruptly, but that was awesome. Like I said, I had no idea what to expect or anything, but that was awesome. I got to admit though, the text textures could be better on the planet, like on Earth and on the Moon. I found it was pretty low res, but apart from that, yeah, absolutely awesome. Don't let that stop you for giving that a go. That is cool, but yeah, for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.